morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Deanna Jones. I am the training and education co-chair along with my partner here, Mark. Come on camera and wave for the recording. <laughs> I manage a facility down in Brandywine with the Prince George's County Department of Parks and Recreation. And I have the pleasure of introducing today's Lunch and Learn um, speaker, Natalie Smart. Natalie Smart is the founder of Destination Hike LLC. It is a year round traveling and hiking organization based in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Destination Hike was established in May 2020, and it encourages people of all ages, abilities, and experience levels to join scheduled local and travel hikes. Hikes are indicated by difficulty and length, so each participant can determine which hike they want to enjoy. Traveling to hike was Natalie's inspiration and motivation to create Destination Hike, seeking to encourage those who may not have considered travel with the sole purpose of hiking to be a judicious way to vacation, Natalie sought to change the narrative and inspire all people to give it a try with Destination Hike. Hikers have already enjoyed travel trips to New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maine, Maryland, Virginia, and Nevada. Travel plans for 2023 are already underway with three new travel hiking destinations within the US and international travel is planned for 2024. Destination Hike has been mentioned in Self Magazine, The Grio, and the Chesapeake Bay Net. It was also voted for and named number five on USA Today's Reader's Choice 10 Best Travel Adventure Companies. The trademark is pending. So join me in welcoming our speaker, Natalie Smart. Yay, thank you, Dion. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Deanna. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take over the share screen because um, I put together, can you guys see that? We can. can put it in present mode, okay. All right, perfect. So don't be um, alarmed by the number of slides because it's a lot of pictures and I'm just gonna be clicking through. I know some of you are like 81 slides, 83 slides. No, it's gonna go quickly, but um, so what I wanted to do, thank you guys for the opportunity to just talk about Destination Hike. Um, this is something that I kind of established in 2020 and it really came um, out of COVID, out of a way to stay active um, once the world shut down. So I'm kind of gonna talk about that um, and just how I decided to create it as an LLC because um, Destination Hike was actually not the original name. It was actually Hike is Life. And um, when I looked to try to actually make it a business, Hike is Life was actually already an established business name. So I had to think about something else. And when I really sat to think about what do I really want to do with this, um, traveling to hike was um, what my main focus was. So instead of calling it travel hike or travel hikers, I kind of came up with the name destination hike. Um, so uh, thank you for allowing me to the opportunity. Like I said, I have a lot of pictures. So I like to tell the story through pictures. And I want to talk about how it started out with a small group of people during COVID hanging out and hiking to over a hundred and something people coming to hikes um, throughout 2020. So, um, but in order to talk about that, we have to start here, which is my beautiful hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, you can tell by the skyline, all these um, images, all these buildings are the strip. And that's primarily what people know Vegas for. But what I wanted to tell people about was what's behind the strip, which is the mountains. I love the mountains of Las Vegas, I grew up hiking the mountains you know when you're young you don't realize that it's hiking like you just go to the mountains and um before they started building all the way to the back of the mountain or to the front of the mountain um there was a lot of area that you know you just kind of traversed um this is my favorite location red rock every time i go back to las vegas i do not leave without going to red rock mountain um so it's just it's gorgeous the colors are amazing and so that's kind of how i started getting involved in hiking when i was younger um, and then a little bit, um, I went to school at UC Berkeley. So this is an image of Berkeley, California. And um, I went to school for volleyball, but in my free time, I would do like little local hikes around Berkeley. And that's when I got kind of got familiar with a different type of terrain. You know, Las Vegas is very mountainous and rugged and open. And California is where I got introduced to a lot of like the trees and the nature. And this is an image of the big C. So UC Berkeley, when you see people say Cal, 
they're talking about UC Berkeley. <laughs> Cal is like short, you know, that's just how they've advertised UC Berkeley. And so this is a hike to the big C. And this was like at the top of this like extremely long um, mountaintop on Berkeley's campus. And so that I would do that almost every day. I just loved going up there. And so I was like getting used to, you know, terrain where there's just a lot of trees, a little bit more shade, a little bit more muggy. And then fast forward again to when I moved out to Maryland and then I'm like, okay, this is Vegas mountains just with a million trees on it. And so I, you know, start to get used. This is actually a picture of uh, Shenandoah. Um, start to get used to the mountain ranges out here and really um, enjoyed that. So how I got started, I used to actually um, be a hike leader for a group called Goombe. Um, and I started joining with them in 2019. I really actually started doing kickball and then they would do hikes like periodically. And so I really got involved in the hiking and it reminded me of what I love to do um, back home. And then guess what? COVID-19 hit in 2020 and the world was shut down. Like people weren't doing these big group outings anymore. They weren't going in, in buildings together. They weren't even doing a lot of outdoor activities in large groups. So what I did in order to stay active is I still went out. I like, I get cabin fever times a thousand. And so I was like, I have to go outside. Um, I took my buddy here um, in 2020. I did so much hiking and I have this app called All Trails that tracks how many miles you do. I did 700 miles of hiking in 2020 and he was right there with me. Hardy just loved it. And I was like, I've got to stay active. And so what I would do is I would post pictures of when I was out by myself with my dog and then people would come by um, or they would comment and say, hey, let me know when you're going out again. And so people would then start coming out and um, joining us on the hikes. Um, and so then they'd be like, well, let's establish where do we want to go? We want to do long hikes. We want to do um, hikes with different terrain. We want to we want to climb mountains. And so people would come out and um, it just kind of grew from there. It was kind of like, OK, it was first it was texting a few people. Then it, it grew to enough people to create a group chat. And then it was like people really kind of wanted something structured and organized. So that's when I created the website. Um, destinationhike.com. So that's just kind of like how it started. And then ultimately, um, I'm going to show you a series of pictures because in 2020 and 2021, we did not just do hiking. We did a lot of hiking, but people still kind of wanted to do like small group activities. So um, this is a picture from, this is a trail at Turkey Run in Virginia. And um, there, I love this hike because there's like this rope section part to get across and it's, it's I call it my favorite adventure trail because people love to do it. Um, I also partnered with this group called Go Adventures and so 2020 and 2021 I did multiple wilderness survival classes and my, the instructor Eric like got a lot of people set and in those classes it taught you how to how to start your own fire, how to um, filter water and how to build a shelter. Um, then in 2021, I really started doing a lot of hike and yogas. This is at Burke Lake in Virginia. And so what we would do is we'd hike the trail. And then at the end, we'd have yoga. I had a yoga instructor who would come out and lead people through yoga stretches afterwards. Um, I also did what I, I had a series of 40 plus and fit hikes. And so this was a picture from one of those. And these two people actually, they had never hiked before. And so they were just so excited to get out and they were excited to be um, I think the allure of the 40 plus and fit was that it's like, you know, everyone is a little bit older and some people may have been fit, some people may not have been, but they wanted to just explore hiking. Um, we also did a lot of, I love trap and skeet shooting, and I was like, you guys need to explore the outdoors with me. So we did um, trap and skeet shooting at Bull Run in Virginia. I think at the time, the, the facility that Park and Planning owns in Greenbelt was closed. So we were doing a lot of stuff in Virginia. This is an image from one of the hikes, the trails in um, Virginia as well. And a lot of people come out. Um, this was at one of our challenge hikes in Annapolis. A lot of people don't realize there's this trail in Annapolis. I, I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to find it. And it's hidden. It's like uh, off to the side, there's a bunch of houses and apartments and it's in a pet smart shopping center. Um, and it's one of the hardest hikes. It's like 11 miles. And it's just like, we, I should show you the after picture because everyone was excited before, but once we finished, everyone was done. 
Um, so we've done, we've gone to places, we've gone to Catoctin, um, which we did one of there, but there's a really hard trail out in Catoctin also. Um, and a lot of people like that. These two folks right here, the one right in the middle that has the Air Force and the bug net and the one on the far right with the pink hat, I am gonna talk about them because they are my true troopers. They are in their seventies and can out hike most of the people who come on these trails. They are true staples of destination hike. Um, this was also at um, Rock Creek Park when we did a meditation hike. For those of you who are familiar with Goombe, that is over to the left. I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see the arrow that I'm pointing? Can you see? Okay, that is the leader of Goombe. And so at some, at, when I first started Destination Hike, we were kind of like merging hiking together and then kind of separated because I wanted to focus primarily on, only on hiking and he was still doing like um, outdoor adventures, sports, um, et cetera. Um, did a bunch of other hikes, did sunrise hikes. This is at um, Sugarloaf Mountain. Sunrise hiking is amazing. You start out in the dark and you bring your headlamp and you're climbing up this mountain. By the time you get to the top, the sun is rising and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, we did a bunch of kayaking also in Virginia, um, 2020 and 2021, we did group kayaks um, and it was just a great, great time. Um, and so these are pictures just showing you the different types of people who come out. There's people of all ages. It's not, you know, I'm in my 30s, but it's not only people in their 30s who come. As a matter of fact, the majority of the people who come are in their 40s and 50s. <laughs> and then we have like a sprinkle of 30s. Um, this was also at the, the one that had the rope. This was at Turkey Run. It's a very, very fun um, hiking trail. This, I don't know, my thing is blocking it at the bottom, but this is uh, again at one of the wilderness survival classes. And this lady was just so excited when she got her fire to start. It's just, it's it's a nice feeling when you figure out how to do it on your own, you use the the flint striker and you you get your fire started. And then they, you know, he taught us how to, to tr move your fire from once you've got that little pile, move it to another location. Um, so that was a lot of fun. This picture starts when we um, started doing, so in 2020, it was just a lot of local hikes because again, the world was shut down. No one was flying anywhere. Um, but towards the end of, actually the beginning of 2021, I started doing travel hikes and I, I picked um, like small travel hikes. I picked locations that we could drive to. So this was actually in New Jersey. And a, a couple of the pictures you'll see are part of um, the Appalachian Mountain Club. So for those of you who don't know, obviously the Appalachian Mountain runs along the East Coast. It goes from Georgia to Maine, but there's also um, an organization called the Appalachian Mountain Club that have um, like campgrounds and, and um, cabins and stuff along the Appalachian Trail that people can come stay at and hike. And so this was in New Jersey. And I actually, this lady right here, her name is Crystal, and she's actually the DEI director of the Appalachian Mountain Club. And she, I partnered with her and we actually did, when we were in New Jersey, we did an ancestral hike weekend, which was really a lot of fun. Um, she's really into like she, everyone went and found their own stick. She explained like, figure out the stick that's calling out to you. She brought all kinds of cloth and designs for people to design their sticks. And I still have, uh, I still have mine. You know? And you're not supposed to let anyone touch it. So I keep the one that I made in my office. I don't let my dog touch it. I let it in the, I keep it in the corner. It's a very long stick. And they were like, that's aptly for you, Natalie. It's a huge, long, ginormous um, stick that you have. But um, so that was a really fun, fun trip. Um, I tried to get this picture to show the top that said AMC, but so just when I refer to it, just so people aren't thinking that I'm talking about the movie theater, AMC, what I'm standing, saying, it stands for Appalachian Mountain Club. Um, and then so also in 2021, we did backpacking. So those of you who are familiar with hiking and backpacking, you can already uh -oh, tell what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> and so we, um, I did a session where I was just trying to teach people, we were at Prince William Forest Park and they have, um, they have a campground at Turkey Run and a campground at Oak Ridge. And we started out at Turkey Run and then kind of like backpacked to Oak Ridge. Um, this guy, he was former military and I guess he couldn't get out of his mind like that he didn't need to bring absolutely every possible thing he needed. This was entirely too much stuff, especially for one day. He ended up 
um, having, he, he couldn't make it back. So we actually had to get our cars. We were going to hike from Turkey Run to Oak Ridge and then back from Oak Ridge, back to our cars and Turkey Run. And he, he couldn't do it. He just brought too much stuff. So we really kind of explained to people like, okay, when it comes to backpacking, only what you need. You don't need, when you, if you think you need it, you don't need it um, unless it's food, water, or shelter related. And, and even with clothing, you don't need as much clothes as you need, as you think you need when you go backpacking. Um, so all those, out of all those activities and events that I had done, um, I had to resort back to what was my whole intention and purpose to begin with, which was getting people out to Las Vegas. Um, I, especially having lived on the East Coast for now 15 years, there's a lot of people who've been to Vegas multiple times and have never considered hiking. Like they're, the strip is it. I remember in high school, people used to ask, I mean, in college, people used to ask me if I lived in hotels. And I'm like, you've got to understand there's much more to Vegas than the strip, than the hotel. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to create a trip to Las Vegas. I, you know, I don't know who's going to come. I'm going to put it out there. If people want to come, if five people want to come, 10 people want to come, whoever wants to come, I'm going. And I, um, established a registration. I did a zoom call to talk about all the places we were going to go. Um, and so when we went, um, people were like, yeah, I want to go to Las Vegas. I want to go to Vegas to hike. Um, so we actually ended up having 17 people who came. And the funny thing is 16 of them were women. And you see Rob back there in the back was the only male who came. He was kind of holding it down for the men. He um, he absolutely loves hiking. So I showed this picture of him because one of the hikes that we did was um, to Gold Strike. It's called the Gold Strike hike where you hike to a um, hot spring. Um, and Gold Strike Canyon, we're actually doing that, that trip, the whole Vegas trip again this year. Um, and it was just a beautiful, it's a beautiful trip. Um, this was our tour guide. I ended up, we got a, a 46 um, passenger coach bus. And this was our tour guide that took us around everywhere. He was hilarious and fantastic. And, you know, as people would, um, he would tell people about all the um, spicy locations in Vegas. And I don't mean that by like, you know, strip clubs and all that stuff. I just mean, there are certain things that are legal. And so people were just like, oh, what's, where is that in Las Vegas? He's like, I got you. And I'm like, Lord, please don't tell my pastors where they can go get <laughs> substances. I need people to be focused. Um, but this was, so this was also at the Gold Strike hike in Las Vegas. Um, I, I love a good rope section. There were eight rope sections. I highlighted this picture because this lady just turned 50. This was her birthday present to herself for her 50th birthday, and she was out there killing it. Um, this is at uh, Valley of Fire. A lot of people love Valley of Fire because it just reminds them of Mars. Like, if you've never been there, it's absolutely, like, everywhere is kind of this orangey, peachy color. There's pinks, there's whites, and you just feel like you're in a totally different place. Um, we took some pictures, everyone had group shirts of Destination Hike, and we took some pictures in front of the uh, Las Vegas sign. And um, this was a picture that we took at the hot spring because a lot of people brought their bathing suits um, because at the hot spring you could get in. Um, and I could not take people to Las Vegas without taking them to the strip. Like I just, I, I get that that's what everyone knows Vegas for. So after, after three vigorous days of hiking, we went to the strip and this trip was around Halloween. If you've never experienced Halloween in Las Vegas, you need to go. <laughs> and so, um, and I also like to highlight this picture because this is one of our participants and I like to highlight it because she really represented that you don't have to be, a lot of people think, oh, I have to be in like hiking shape or I have to be a certain hiking body to start hiking. This woman went out there, absolutely killed it, did all of the trails and had a blast. Um, and this is kind of some of the activities we did. This was one of the participants in the middle. And these were some random people on the strip with their Halloween costumes. This was kind of when we got ready to go on the, the day before the last day. The lady, she came as a male woman. And so she gave everyone mail. I was trying my hardest to do Harley Quinn with, and I don't know if it worked or not, but I had a great time. <laughs> um, and so then this was just kind of on the strip. I tell you in 2021, Vegas acted like COVID never existed, but you know, hey, we were having a good time for Halloween on the strip. Um, so just as a, just to talk a little bit more about just outdoor exercise in general, and there's like multiple benefits of outdoor exercise, but 
kind of like the four major ones that I focus on is that it, it boosts your mood. It engages all of your senses. Um, for most people, it's more exciting than just stationary indoor exercise. Like you get to see different things, um, be in different climate, whether you're biking, kayaking, you just get, there's so much scenery and there's so many things involved. Um, and then it encourages social interaction. Obviously camping, hiking, all that stuff, you, you do that either with groups of people or if you're someone who likes to go solo, um, it's also good just to refresh and center yourself if you're going by yourself. Um, one of the things we did in 2021 also is we partnered with um, Diversity Whitewater and just Diversify Whitewater and Great, Wall, Great Falls Foundation. And we did a community float and it was a free community float in 2021. Um, and a lot of people came out, like it was just, we had a very, very good time. It was completely free. They got some sponsorships for the food um, and people really enjoyed um, going out. And a lot of people learned who had never been out to Whitewater. We actually did it again. Chuck, is that you? No, that's actually another Chuck though. Sorry, I forgot, this is another Chuck. Um, but um, you know, we had, a, we had a fantastic time. We did it again in 2021. Also, I couldn't be there because I think that was during the main trip that I did, but um, a lot of people enjoyed it. So um, the culmination of 2020 and 2021 led to this very surprising nomination from USA Today's 10 Best um, I didn't even realize that these kind of um, nominations existed, like where they'll do, you know, best travel company, they'll do best beer garden, best um, credit card company, all these different things. Um, and so they, they put 20 um, organizations up and then they um, finalized on a top 10. Um, the next two pages are kind of blurry, but this is from the site uh, once they finally had the um, awards. Um, Destination Hike actually ended up as number five, which is huge. This was only the second year of Destination Hike, and it's getting nominated for number five. And so, um, you know, I thought that was amazing. And I hate that this is kind of blurry, but these are the 10 who, um, the 10 who were nominated. And so I say, even though it was number five on this list, it was number one from the East Coast. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was, it was just really cool. And it was cool to see my hometown, Nevada was on there twice where I went to school, Emeryville was very close to Berkeley. So it was just nice seeing um, the organizations that were um, nominated as well. Um, so outside of that, um, 2022, this year we've continued to do um, a little bit more of the same camping trips. This was when we did stargazing. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with International Dark Sky Parks, but there's one in Cherry Springs um, State Park, which is in Pennsylvania and an absolutely wonderful dark sky park. They have an instructor that comes out every night to tell you what you're looking at. That was the first time I'd ever seen the green light. It's like a green pointer light that reminds you of the red light that your teacher had in school, um, except it's green and it, you only certain people are actually allowed to use it because the light goes up so high that it has been known to distract pilots. So you have to be careful when you're using that light because it looked like he was drawing on the stars and showing the outline of all of the star constellations that we've seen. Um, and so uh, just, just having fun with folks, camping. Um, camping is one of my favorite things to do. And this is actually the perfect time to camp. Fall is a beautiful time. It's not hot, not too hot, not too cold. Um, having the s'mores is great. I personally cannot go camping past November. <laughs> this was a trip that we did in November and we all almost died. It was so cold, but <laughs> some people maybe like the cold, but um, as far as camping, I'll, I'll hike in November and December, but camping, staying out in the cold, that's just not for me. <laughs> um, and this is also another camping trip. And I highlight this picture not to be like, oh, you guys were drinking because first of all, these are all non-alcoholic beers <laughs> and, um, the uh, USA, what is it? Um, American Hiking Association every year celebrates the National Hiking Day, which I think is in like June. Um, and so each year they partner with organizations and they'll send out stuff to different hike groups just to highlight what they're doing on that hike day. Last year they sent um, like packs of bug, bug spray. And this year um, they sent... Um, uh, non-alcoholic beer. I forget the name of the, 
location it's on there it's like a something but um it's it's for some i i didn't really care for it but it was it was fun you know they gave cases of it to us um so then this year just um coming around to kind of where we are now august of 2022 we did our um kind of like big trip for 2022 which was going to maine um now in hindsight I will not, if I do Maine again and stay in this area, I will not call it the 100 mile wilderness because I realized that people could not get past that name. No, we did not go hike 100 miles. We stayed in an area of Maine, which is known as 100 mile wilderness. Um, and so again, back to the um, Appalachian Mountain range, um, you know, through hikers that go from Georgia to Maine, throughout there's locations where you can stop, where you can camp, you can re-up, you can um, get all the kind of supplies that you need. However, there is a section in Maine that there is not a stopping point for 100 miles. And that's why that area is called the 100 mile wilderness. Um, and a, the Appalachian Mountain Club has a location there and that's where we stayed. So um, this was on top of a mountain where we, we took a boat ride to Mount Kineo. It was at Moosehead Lake in Maine. You get on this, um, this shuttle that hikes that kind of shuttles you over to this mountain. We climbed up Mount Kineo. It was beautiful. Um, this was the next day we went to Acadia National Park. Of course, you, you got to go to Maine and go to Acadia, um, which ironically was is actually three hours from where we were staying, but we were not going to fly all the way out to Maine and not go to Acadia. Um, so this was kind of some of our group. We had a we had a smaller group, and I think, and that's okay because I think people one had not really thought about hiking in Maine. Some of the folks that come to the, the locations or to the hikes. And then also because people just could not get past the name 100 Mile Wilderness. So we, we did hike the Cadillac Trail. And when I say it was straight up, like it was just straight up, <laughs> but it was a really good trail. We had a really good time there. We then stopped at a location in um, Bar Harbor called Getty's. And of course you don't go to Maine and not try Maine lobster. Like the lobster was just incredible. Um, so we had a really good trip and, and you know, we're just kind of continuing with that. Um, as Deanna had read, I'm planning the trips for um, next year. And I will say that um, I thought I had them set. <laughs> Until last week for my birthday, I went to New Mexico. I had not thought about New Mexico, but New Mexico is definitely on the trip for next year. It's, it was just fantastic. Um, so I kind of threw this in here. I'm kind of like some tips to bring when hiking. Now people bring their own additional items, but um, when you do hike, obviously you want to do weather appropriate clothing because hiking is year round. So I'm not going to say wear a t-shirt or wear a sweatshirt because if it's the summer or the fall, you're gonna wear what's appropriate. Um, hiking boots are preferred, but if you only have tennis shoes and you're just getting into hiking, tennis shoes are okay. Um, just make sure you're aware of the terrain. Sunscreen through all seasons, um, bring a backpack to carry kind of like any supplies in the water you may need, a hat if you need it, a headlamp, especially if you know you're doing a sunset or a sunrise hike, or if you're gonna do a long hike where you could possibly get um, end up having to stay where you are. At least you'll have some light. Uh, navigational information. A lot of people use the app All Trails, or and, but there's also multiple trail apps that you can use that navigate you through. Um, personal items, um, medication you may need, a small first aid kit. If you're going in group hikes, the group hike leader should should have a first aid kit. But if you're going by yourself, it's probably good to have that. Um, always important to bring snacks, um, water. I always recommend at least a liter, but, and that also depends on, you'll add more water depending on how long you're hiking. And then a communication tool. Some people like to say when they go hiking, they don't want to bring their phone. They want to disconnect. You can turn your phone off, but you need to have some way to communicate just in case something happens. Um, so outside of that, these are just some more hikes that we did um, recently. You know, Park and Planning actually owns a trail called the Underground Railroad Trail in Silver Spring, Maryland. And so this was a hike that we did um, there. And these are just some more pictures. Again, people absolutely love when they start their own fire. I can't even tell you the excitement that people have when they, they learn that skill. Um, and as you'll see, these shirts, like 
as the as the business grew and just for marketing, I, I would create different kinds of destination hike shirts. Um, and these are these pictures are a mix of throughout the winter, um, throughout the summer, um, just to highlight that hiking is year round. I also did a um, empowerment hike. And so this hike was called the I am hike and people who registered you could register just to come for the hike or you could register to get an I am shirt and people um, would then um, put their ad whatever adjective they wanted. So these are all the, these are a couple of different um, adjectives that people wanted on their personal uh, shirt. And then again, just branding, branding the shirt, a, a couple of different designs that I've had throughout the year. Um, a lot of people really like this one. This one was cool for me, but um, it's, it says destination hike, obviously, because this is a Google marker telling you where you are in your destination and then hike. Um, and then just, just more group pictures. This was uh, another hike in yoga in Fort Washington. A lot of people don't realize that there's a trail out in Fort Washington that's absolutely gorgeous at Fort Washington Park. Um, and this is, these are some more pictures. I don't know why some of these come out blurry. And this is the picture from um, the website. So um, I do wanna, let me see if I can pull up one last thing. Uh oh, let me escape out of here and just kind of pull up the website and then kind of leave it open if, if anyone had any uh, questions. Um, so this is the website, this, this main, um, uh, what's it called strip, the picture will change over time, but I like to have kind of like a moving picture. Um, and this gives people information just to kind of about who we are, if you want to go on the hikes, if you want to stay connected. Um, this was for 2022, these were the main travel trips we had. We did a big water weekend in Virginia. Um, we did a match adventure um, in New York, which is at one of the AMC locations, the stargazing weekend, um, and then the 100 mile wilderness trip and the destination hike that's Las Vegas trip, which is coming up um in October um people I kind of navigate people here's the upcoming hikes that we have so we're doing one this Saturday and doing one next Saturday and then not doing anything because the Vegas trip is the end of October and then I've got some of the November trips up too I, I did a series called so you think you can hike and so those are some of the harder hikes I always do a hike on Thanksgiving day people like to get out and work out before they eat um, I need to change this because this one actually had already passed. Um, and the gallery just has a, a, a bunch of the different pictures from this. Is, these are more pictures from the main trip. These are pictures from our hike and yogas, from our wilderness survival. Um, you'll find lots of, you know, different things that we've done. Um, this was from the Vegas trip last year. Um, so, so yeah, this is the kayaking. Obviously there's a, there's a waiver because as much as, as much as hiking is fun, hiking is also inherently dangerous. Um, and I say that not to scare people, but because it, it just is there, you can fall on rocks, there's wilderness out there. Um, so this is something that I, that I put up um, as well. So I just want to kind of highlight that. Um, and then if anyone had any questions about it, I would be more than happy to answer, but that's just kind of, that's, that's Destination Hike in a nutshell. Um, we are definitely doing, um, like I said, New Mexico, because I just went, it was, oh my God, it was so amazing. The, the terrain in New Mexico surprised me because I really thought it was going to be similar to the terrain in Las Vegas, but it was more similar to East Coast terrain than I thought it would be. Um, so it was, it was really, it was really gorgeous. And then the other two, um, I'm, I'm putting that out at the end of October because I got to finalize, you know, transportation and all that stuff. But, but yeah, so that's it. Any Thank questions? you, Natalie. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. I have a question that's super easy. Okay. <laughs> what kind of dog is Hardy and how <laughs> old is he? So Hardy is actually 12 now, um, but he is a Rhodesian Ridgeback and Pit Mix. So <laughs> he loves hiking like he just loves being outdoors he's slowing down a little bit now but he'll still go out on the trail with me <laughs> do some of your other folks that you meet up with bring dogs also 
No. So on the group hikes, no, because um, you just, I don't, you never know who's like afraid of dogs or if what kind of distractions the dogs may bring if someone gets hurt. So I just, I just suggest people don't bring um, their pets on the hikes. Yeah. Right. And did you want to go ahead? Uh, sorry, I was just going to ask a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question was, do you do like prep hikes? Uh, so I have a lot of people that we will do like really short hikes just so that they'll learn how to hike. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, uh, some of them that I've seen are, uh, uh, you know, well, four, four miles or better. Um, but I've, in my old life, uh, we would do something like maybe a half a mile or a mile. Do you do prep, uh, prep work, especially with backpacking, it's, you know, the yeah. backpack, you don't have to up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I actually did for in 2020 and 2021, I did a whole series of um, introduction to hiking. Um, I didn't do anything as short as a half a mile. The shortest that I would do would be would be three miles. And um, it's funny because a lot of people think like people who aren't hikers or they don't go out and stuff, they're like, oh, my God, three miles. And it's like it's it's really not that long. I'd always pick kind of like flat trails and um people were like, oh, that's not that bad. And I'm like, well, if you can do three miles, you can do six miles. Like, and, and so people would kind of like build from there. So yeah, I have done that. I have not done any intro to hiking. I did two intro to hikings this year, um, but I kind of like will sporadically put those in there, but primarily because the focus is travel hiking. Most of the people who do come um, either have some background in hiking a little bit, um, or they are trying to build up for like kind of longer, like I'm going on these travel hikes and I know they're going to be a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, so I do, I do sprinkle it in there, but um, a lot of people will be surprised. Four miles is really not as difficult as people think. If you're not used to it though, you might hear four miles and just be like, oh my, I could never, <laughs> but, but yeah, people, I, I have done them, but um but yeah, and we're actually planning on doing one. I, think, I don't know if Deanna's going to mention that, but we are planning on doing a hike for MRPA to kind of get people to come out. And so, um, and that'll be a four mile hike also. <laughs> Go ahead and tell them. Go ahead and tell them. The details. Yeah, so um, I, and, you know, we had talked about doing a kind of like a MRPA hike and trying, you know, sometimes it's hard trying to find a location that's, you know, best for everybody or locally, centrally located. But I've pulled up, um, hold on, let me, why is this thing in my way? I pulled up, um, I'm going to pull up all trails because that's, that's the app that I use so I can show you the trail that um, we have decided on. What is this? I feel like I have this. I'm not a robot. Okay. Um, so um, the one thing I really like about all trails is that it, it saves everything that you've done. So it'll give you all your completed trails. Um, this was obviously when I was in Mex New Mexico. Um, when I went to Arizona, Chuck, for NRPA, I went and hiked <laughs> this trail called Midlife Crisis. And I was like, this must be what I'm having to do this in 103 degree weather. Um, so, but it'll kind of give you a view of all throughout the country and it'll tell you where, you know, where you've hiked. But the, um, the hike that we're going to do is at Jug Bay. And I, um, I sent, I don't know if I sent it to who I sent it to, if I sent it to Deanna or um, Nancy, but I'll send this link and that usually gives people an image and all the information that they would need to determine um, what's to just to know what's going on on the trail. And I usually send this out on the hikes that I go on um, my group hikes and I'll show people, they'll be able to see here at the bottom, the elevation, they'll be able to see the route of the trail. They'll see the upcoming weather. They get to read a lot of people's reviews um they also can see pictures that people have uploaded on the trail so it'll give them <laughs> kind of an idea of what to expect um so this is one that you know i've done a few times and um it's a really great location um elevation i kind of tell people about elevation usually if it's between 100 and 500 feet of elevation it's it's flat <laughs> there may be like some you know like small rolling hills but it's not anything um massive but sometimes um let me see if i can in, find you one where it's um uh oh where the elevation is a little bit 
different. I'm trying to think Cadillac. This was when we were in Maine. So, um, you know, all trails will rate it. It's rated as a hard trail. And that's the elevation was 1,128 feet, which gives you kind of a, a, a different idea of what it's like. And then you can see here down at the bottom how the elevation ran. And that was straight up. You're just going up, 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 up. And then on your way back, you're going down because this is what is considered an out and back trail. It's not a loop. So as you see, you'll see the blue dot moving that just kind of shows your route. So as you're going up, you go up and then you turn back around and you're going back down to where you started. Um, so, so anyway, that's the trail that um, we have planned for, I think it's October 24th, the Jug Bay Trail. Um, is it the 20th? Oh, I'm sorry, the 20th, yeah. Yeah, so um, we can kind of send out suggestions for things people should bring. I know it'll be a little bit cooler then, so definitely would advise like a sweatshirt or um, a jacket or, or whatever works for, you know, each person, so. Well, that was my question. Um, where oh. do you shop for your gear? Uh, <laughs> so I actually, so I make a lot of the Destination Hike sweatshirts here. Um, I, I screen print them and then I'll, I'll order sweatshirts from a um, s and Worldwide. But I do, you know, people can get stuff like puff jackets or whatever kind of jacket they need. They can get it from anywhere from Walmart or if you want to go fancy, fancy, you can get it from REI. Um, I don't shop at REI often because a lot of stuff is very expensive there. But the one thing I will not um, budge on, I will get my hiking boots from there. Um, if you're gonna really commit to hiking, I suggest getting a strong, like good sturdy hiking boot. Um, because actually I forgot to add this picture, but on in Maine, one of the guys who was hiking, when we got to the bottom of Mount Kineo, the soles of his boots had fallen off. Like he just like, there was an empty, so we had to go get him more hiking boots. So, um, and that was because he had kind of like, you know, cheaper brand that he thought, oh, well, I'll just use this. But, um, but yeah, so I said, I'll, I'll do REI for that. But people do, or sometimes what people can do is they can go to REI, they let you test out the shoes and they have like a, like a mountain statue that you can kind of like climb on to see how the shoes fit. And then if you then see that brand and you find it cheaper somewhere else, sometimes people do that also. Um, the shoes that I had, the boots that I used, um, are like $300, but I got 700 miles out of them. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's kind of like you weigh how much you're going to actually be active. So, so yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to talk about it and to, to share it. And it's, it's been such a, such a passion of mine. And, um, you know, obviously everything was shut down in 2020. So it was like, I was like, what am I going to do? I'm not staying in the house. <laughs> like I'm going to risk it all to go outside and hike. <laughs> so, and then, you know, there were people who also wanted to do that as well. So, so it's been good. Hopefully look out for bigger thing, bigger and better things. Um, I'm still, the trademark is still pending. I did not realize one, how long the process takes. And um, I had to actually get a lawyer for that just to make sure that I, you know, applied for it correctly. Um, and then, you know, doing more travel. It's, I like the local hikes, but I think next year is going to be mostly focused on travel because people can hike locally with a bunch of different groups, but it's kind of like, Hey, if you want to come on this trip to New Mexico, if you want to come on this trip here, um, you know, you can come with Destination Hike. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking myself and my son on our first hike. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to know how many people are here that do hike. I am not a hiker, um, but I did hike with Natalie and her group um, once. So. Thanks for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Just making sure no one else has a question. Um, I don't see anything in the chat. Just making sure that if you have something that you share it while we're here. Yeah. And also I would say um, check, you guys can check out, let me pull it back up. Um, you can check out Destination Hike on, oh, 
move this thing. All right, on Facebook and Instagram, um, do not go to my personal one, but I, <laughs> if you go to um, Destination Hike, it's actually um, destination.hike. Um, so because just at Destination Hike on Instagram was already uh, taken. So, and this is where I'll, you know, post the different things. This was, um, I don't know if it'll pop up. This was a quick shot from um, New Mexico that was absolutely like ridiculous. I just had such a good time um, there. So I, I like to show trips and stuff in images and in, in video. Um, so, and then these are just kind of all the hikes. It'll give you kind of like where we were. This was when we were in Acadia. Um, and then in the past I've done a, like here's some, a good, a few good hikes in DC that you should check out, um, you know, um, and that one uh, was pretty well received. Um, and then there are a few in, um, um, I think I did one at one for, Maryland hikes, um, and this is Calvert Cliffs is actually where the hike for tomorrow. Um, Cedarville is a beautiful trail in Clinton. Billy Go Trail is the one everyone kind of knows. Um, and then Annapolis Waterworks, that's the trail that I was thinking about that um, I couldn't remember in Annapolis. That's like a surprisingly hard trail. Um, and then so, and then these were some that were in Virginia and, you know, this one, Raven Rocks is one of my favorite ones. If you've ever been, it's further out in Virginia. But so yeah, so you can check out kind of where we're at, what we've done. It's been two years. Um, National Trails Day, that's what it was. And they gave us this free alcoholic um, uh, beer. It wasn't the greatest, but you know, it's <laughs> for to each his own. Here's some images from our um, uh, wilderness survival you know, where people use the kind of flint to start their own fire and people get so excited when they're just like, oh my gosh. And then he taught us how to transport it to another location, which was really, really cool. Um, so there's kind of stuff like that. This was one of our trips when we went to New York, people went fishing. This is from um, the hike and yoga and, you know, people really like enjoy just the different things we do. And then there's my baby because he is just he goes everywhere with me. He just loves it. I love my hearty. <laughs> so, so those are some things to, um, to look at. You guys can see that on, on Instagram and the, the Facebook page is actually destination hike. There's no dot because it wasn't taken on Facebook. So, <laughs> but I mostly post on Instagram. I feel like Facebook is kind of for our, like us oldies, but like <laughs> Instagram <laughs> is a little bit more of the I'm trying to get in TikTok, but that's a little bit harder because, you know, people like to see like goofy stuff on TikTok. But anyway, so yeah, well, thank you guys. Thank you, Deanna, thank for you. suggesting this. And, you know, yeah. yeah, I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Looking forward to doing more with Destination Hype. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.